Oh, right, we are recording. We started, or we finished the uh, the, the beautiful sikh that the Rebbe had on Parshas Mitzavim, that God blesses the month of uh, Tishrei. He blesses the month. Usually the Jewish people on the last Shabbat of the preceding month, the Jewish people make a blessing for the ensuing month. And this year, uh, and, and but on the month of Elul, we don't bless the month of Tishrei. We don't bless it. And it says it's in order to confuse the Satan or whatever, but another reason is that God blesses the month. How does he bless it? With Parshish Nitzavim. <clears throat> and he makes the Jews one, <clears throat> and he makes the Jews united. United means every Jew is different, and every Jew contributes to every other Jew, and the Jews are one, means that every Jew is exactly the same. We're part of one big body, and all, each one has its advantage <clears throat> over the other, and this is what happens on Rosh Hashanah. And by means of that, all the Jews are standing. When we, we appreciate the uniqueness of every Jew, then all the Jews remain standing for a good new year. Now we're talking about Rosh Hashanah. The next week, the Rosh Hashanah, the Rebbe says <clears throat> that there is in the sentence, there's a sentence which is called in Isaiah, search for God when he is near, he's present when he's near. Means that the whole rest of the year, if you pray, your prayers are better, they're more heard in a minion with a group of Jews. But in the 10 days, Rosh Hashanah is two days, and then there's seven days, and then there's Yom Kippur is the 10th the day. In those 10 days, they're called the 10 days of Tshuva, then God is close, he's closer. So you can just pr praying alone is, but not that you should pray alone. But the fact is, if you do pray alone or any personal prayers that you make are more, how do you say, accepted. We said the king is in the field, but it's, the, that was in the month of Elul. In the 10 days of Tshuva, it's even more so. God is even closer. God is really accepting all the prayers, the 10 days of Tshuva. What does it say? It says in the rabbis, what are these 10 days of repentance? What do you mean the 10 days? What are the, the, the 10? All right. All right. So we said that Rosh Hashanah is two days. And then there's seven days afterwards. And then there's one day of Yom Kippur. It comes out to be 10 days. The rabbis say from this sentence in Isaiah, you should look for God when he is near. They say these are the 10 days that are between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. There are only seven days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But on the other hand, the rabbis know what they were talking about. <clears throat> they, if they say there were seven, that there are 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, so they must be hinting at something. So the Rebbe says, yes. The fact is that one aspect of Rosh Hashanah is that it's part of the 10 days of Tshuva. 10 days. On the other hand, <clears throat> part, one thing of Rosh Hashanah is that it's not part of the 10 days of Tshuva, because there's only seven days between, it says the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, those are the days of Tshuva, the days between. So it must be that Rosh Hashanah is part of the 10 days of Tshuva, <clears throat> but on the other hand, it's not because the days of Tshuva are between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So the Rebbe says, yes, <clears throat> there's the, the essential topic of Rosh Hashanah is higher than the fact that Rosh Hashanah is one of the 10 days of tshuva. Tshuva means that if you did sins or you went against God, or you even if you want to go higher <clears throat> in your service of God, so you return closer to God according to his Torah. But <clears throat> Rosh Hashanah is something higher than that. What can be higher than coming closer to God according to his Torah? Very simple. And Rosh Hashanah is the day when we make God a king. If God is a king, then the Torah is worth nothing. If God is not, I'm sorry, if God is not a king, then the Torah is worth, if there's no king, so then there's no commandments. There's no sin. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing right. Right? Okay, you can look at life that way, but that's not the message of the Jews. The message of the Jews is that God is a king. And because God is a king and he gave the Torah, Therefore, it's possible the whole idea of 
good and bad, and making mistakes and fixing the mistakes. With no king, there's no mistakes. So, so that's what he says. Tshuva, the idea of tshuva is higher than the Torah. If the person does sins, so he repents. But making God a king is even higher than that. <clears throat> because if there's no king, who says you even have to repent? Who says that there's anything wrong? So that's the main thing of Rosh Hashanah, is making God into a king. <clears throat> a name which the Torah gives is not just a accidental an accident. Let's just do this one thing. Is, therefore, therefore, it's also understood that the Jewish souls, which are the Jewish souls, they touch God's essence as therefore they're, the God alone is has his will to be a king. But in order to touch that place of God's essence is therefore you have to have an inner surrender from the essence of the soul. Which that's the whole idea of crowning God. That's the essence idea of Rosh Hashanah. Tshuva means that you want to fix up all the bad things that you did or all the mistakes that you had. That's tshuva. That's the part of the 10 days of tshuva. But the essence of Rosh Hashanah which is not part of the days of tshuva, it's higher, is arousing the essence of your soul to coronate the essence of God. And that's what I say, rule over the whole world. <clears throat> and there's, what, what is God? We learned in the previous mimer. There's these aspects of godliness. Sovin call me, mamali call me. God surrounds all the worlds. <clears throat> he surrounds the spiritual. Why is all this? Why did he do the whole thing? Why did God make the whole world? Why does he have to make this whole business? He says, because God wants to be a king. Well, why does he want to be a king? This is impossible to understand. This is, it's not even in the category of understanding. We can't even understand that we're being created. You're going to try to understand why we're being created? Normal human intelligence says there's no such thing as a creator. And if it was, he created the world a long time ago. He doesn't care. That's where all the other religions come from. They worship all sorts of intermediaries and and they don't believe that the Torah is true. The Torah was given. It's just too much. It's just too <clears throat> above understanding. That God is above the world and gave this book called the Torah. And you have to do what it says. And it says, that's why did God do it? Because he wants to be a king over the world. And this touches in our essence. The essence, especially the essence of every Jew. The essence of every Jew is that's why we're called the sons of God. The Jews are called Bunim Hashem. Because this essence of God, to make the world according to the Torah, this is in the essence of <clears throat> a Jew, because it's in the essence of God. It's above any possibility of comprehension and understanding. But it's the essence of reality. It's the most valuable, precious thing that can possibly be. It's above any life or money or anything. It's the source of all life. A, a name which the Torah gives, <clears throat> it's not just an accidental name. <clears throat> or an angenumina nomen, or just a name that was taken on, right? You call a, a person shorty because he's short. Now people don't do that anymore. <clears throat> <clears throat> or you call a person red, or you call a person professor, right? Because he's a professor, right? The, 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 the name given by the Torah is not just a name that was attached, even if it was attached for a good reason, nor erdrikt ois de chayus, but the name that the Torah gives, this expresses the life and the essence of that thing which is called. The name Rosh Hashanah, namely the, year, the head of the year, this hints that all the Eber de Montar of everything that we said before, a head, a cup, the head of a person, Thank <laughs> you.
is two things. Why do the head of a person? Like we have the head of the year. The head of the year, the head of a person. Let's look at our own personal head. The head has the brains in it, right? The head is the mehus un maila from cup, the essence and the how do you say the excellent quality, the uniqueness of the head on itself, it's higher than all the limbs. The head is higher than the rest of the body, right? Like you say, you can have a, a heart transplant and a lung transplant and, a, and an arm transplant and everything transplant, eye transplant. You can't have a brain transplant, the head. The head, that's the person. It's a different person. <clears throat> is, <clears throat> and in is kalul, dem chayas from all The head, on the other hand, includes in it the life of all of the other limbs. The head is the source of life of all. Number three, their cup feared on mit alle vorim, feared an, their chayas, sorry, skip the line. Their, their cup feared, the, the head directs mit alle, feared an, it directs mit alle vorim, euch nach dem, wie der chayas wird schon nimshach in se. The head directs, it's like the, how you call it, the, the, the um, switchboard. And it directs, I don't think there is such a thing anymore, there used to be a switchboard. In uh, Zay, dem zelber is oich the Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so it says the head is above all the limbs. The head can, has the life of all the limbs. And number three, number three, the head directs all of the limbs. The same thing as Rosh Hashanah. On one end, the service of Rosh Hashanah and itself, this is making God a king. That's what we said. Is that, That's the essence of Rosh Hashanah, which this touches on the essence. This contains the life force of all being. Like we said, this is, I mean, no, no, I'm sorry. This is higher. This is higher than all the other being. Hecher from Haban and Erech. This is higher than having any comparison to the other services of the other days of the year. Just like the head is incomparable to any of the limbs of the body, so Rosh Hashanah is in a totally different level. It's higher than any of the other days of the year or the service of the year, even the P- Passover or whatever. Number two, Avod is a tshuva, and then there's so that's the essence of Rosh Hashanah, making God a king. <clears throat> then there's the service of tshuva on Rosh Hashanah, which thus is an erech. This has a con- connection to all of the commandments of God. In other words, <clears throat> it, it contains the life of everything. Avriyas hecher from zei un is via klal versus kolel al zei Allah. So first of all, we have the essence of Rosh Hashanah. That's like the head is higher than the days of the year. That's like the head of a person is higher than all of the limbs. Then we have the tshuva of Rosh Hashanah. <clears throat> That's the whole entire life of a Jew, the life of a Jew, therefore, if a Jew goes against the Torah, tshuva means a new type of a life that he has, that this includes all the life force of all the Torah and the commandments and all of the Jews. Rosh Hashanah, therefore, has tshuva, which is the life force, the general life force for all the Torah and the commandments. And number three is, but the hachlata tova Rosh Hashanah, v'iktoiv kima mitzvahs. When a person makes good resolutions, on Rosh Hashanah, then this has an effect on the commandments that he does the whole year. Rosh Hashanah controls like the switchboard for the whole rest of the year. V, their cup, just like the head, uh, directs all of the limbs. So now we're going to see that Rosh Hashanah has three aspects to it. The highest aspect is that we make God a king. The cent- middle or central, if you want to call it, aspect of Rosh Hashanah is we do tshuva. We return to God. That's lower, but it still is all-encompassing. That encompasses all Judaism. We want to do God's will. That's tshuva. But then there's a third thing is the commandment of the day, the shofar. Vegan Rosh Hashanah, by Rosh Hashanah, it says, mitzvah siyom b'shofar. The commandment of the day is the shofar. Is loit vifriyah giret, like we said before, it's understood. As the Drea voted that the three services of Rosh Hashanah, namely 
make me a king over you. That's the highest. Tshuva, that's the general life force. And Kiyom is doing the commandments. That's like the head directs the whole rest of the year. Zion and Mitzvah Ziyom. It must be that the shofar is the main commandment. It must be that all three of these things are contained in the shofar, making God a king, doing tshuva, and doing the commandments in shofar. Unvi, just like everything in the Pinim is Torah, just like everything in Hasidut and Kabbalah, is thus Marum, as it's hinted at, also in the revealed Torah. The Rambam and the laws of Tshuva says, now the, the Rambam is organized in a way of, it's organized. So it starts off, first of all, talking about uh, Jews in general and what God is in general, how God creates the world in general. And then it talks about serving God, serving God, loving God, and especially the idea of tshuva, especially the idea that if you made a mistake, that you can always fix it up by being tshuva. Over there in the laws of tshuva, the laws of repentance, if you want to call it, the very exact laws, right, what there are, when there's punishment, what type of punishment, and this is all of a sudden he sticks in the middle the laws of the sounding of the shofar. The sounding of the shofar, there's a whole other section that the Rambam has where he talks about the, 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 the holidays and what, how, what, how to eat matzah on Passover, how to take a lulav and etrog on Sukkot, what a sukkah is, and, and what type of fasting on Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah, and all the laws of Rosh Hashanah. That's where this law should be about the sounding of the shofar. All of a sudden, he sticks in the middle of the laws of tshuva, of repentance. He sticks this thing about doing tshuva. Look, it's, what does it say? It says, Af, I'll even know that sounding of the shofar in Rosh Hashanah is a law of the Torah, Gezerah the Katu, Rem is Yeshbo, nevertheless, there is a deep message inside. This is what the Rambam writes, Maimonides. Even though the, 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 the sounding of the shofar is a commandment of the Torah, like all the other commandments, but nevertheless, there's a deep message inside. What's the message? Wake up, choose from your sleep. Do tshuva. It's very long, beautiful how he says it. We have to understand, from Vos Shtel to Ryan, why does Rambam put this law of sounding the shofar in the laws of repentance? He should have put it in the laws of sounding the shofar. There's, there, those laws are later on. Hagama's read it, Dataka, even though it's true, he's talking about doing tshuva, repenting, but because that this is just a hint, it's part of the sounding of the shofar. So he should have put this in the laws of sounding the shofar, right? That they, they will be able to do the commandment better. V the Rambam, just like the Rambam does in other places. The Rambam gives a reason. A lot of times when the Rambam, right, Maimonides, he'll say a commandment, and he'll give a reason for the commandment. For instance, uh, immersing in a mikvah, right? He says, all of these are the laws of the Torah, but nevertheless, they have a, they contain messages and meaning that a person should purify his soul in the waters of the of the of, of true awareness of God and etc. So a lot of times the Rambam puts the reasons for commandments when he's talking about the commandment. It should have been, therefore, when he's talking about the message inside of the shofar, he put it should have put that in the laws of the shofar, which that comes in, you know, 10 chapters later or something. Oh, but this stayed tach stelt. Why the the but Rambam does not aber dach stelt er as nita rain in hilchas tshuva nor in hilchas mikvos. I said the reason for going to the mikvah, right, which is that you have to come closer to God and you have to purify. He doesn't put that law in the laws of repentance. He puts that in the laws of going to the mikvah. We're talking about the mikvah. Right? If so. We have to understand why does the Rambam put shofar in the laws of repentance? We also have to understand the Gemara says, Say before me the sentences of making me a king in order that I'll rule over you. And how do you do it? By shofar. So it means, as durch shofar, by means of shofar, tut zich oich oif de tamlichuni. 
by means of sounding the shofar, we also cause God to be a king. Is far us bring nit the Rambam? If so, why doesn't the Rambam bring? And the shofar, also the thing of making God a king. Why does he bring in shofar? Only the thing about doing tshuva. If he's already going to bring reason, so why doesn't he bring also doing tshuva and making God a king? Says the Ramba, says the Rebbe, I'll tell you why. It's very simple. Kenman, uh, the Eric we can explain that the shofar has in it three things. Number one, the mitzvah of sounding the shofar and all of the details that the Rambam puts among the laws of shofar later on. Then there's a level of tshuva, which is hinted at, only hinted at in the shofar, which is higher than the actual commandment itself. Therefore, Rambam puts that in <clears throat> the laws of tshuva and not in the laws of shofar, because this is a separate thing. This is the, because in the laws of shofar, there he talks only about the commandment of shofar and all the details, which is not the case. The tshuva, the repentance that is inside of shofar, this is higher than the commandment. This is a different category. It's a different dimension. And then also, and that's why the Rambam says in his language, even though the sounding of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah is a decree of the Torah, that the sounding of the shofar is a gezera. It's a, it's a commandment. Duh, his rem is, but, but there happens to be, in addition to the commandment, there's an additional thing, which is not essential. An additional thing, which is doing tshuva. In there, in 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 is marumas and inyan velcha is hecher from the mitzvah, something which is higher than the commandment. But you don't have to do tshuva, repent when you sound the shofar. Shofar is a commandment, right? Like putting on tefillin. You don't have to have any special intention. You're just doing what God says. That that intention you have to have that you're doing what God says for all the commandments. But you don't have to know why you're doing it, what it means, and you want to come closer to God and you're repenting, sounding the shofar is a commandment. You can do this commandment knowing this is what God wants, right? Basics, you can do it that way. You, it's better to have intention. But nevertheless, you can do it. Then there's another thing in shofar, the thing of tshuva, coming close to God, repentance, return to the creator. This is like it's hinted at, this is higher than the commandment itself, that's the tshuva. But then there's also a third thing, that which the shofar brings, that makes God a king. This is even higher than sh the whole idea of the commandment of shofar. And it's even higher than doing tshuva. This thing of making God a king, <clears throat> this is not even in, in ear, a filu in a remis. This is not even hinted at in the shofar. Because this, the hint, the secret in the shofar, that's the thing of doing tshuva. That's a little bit revealed, right? When you sound the shofar, everybody, when you sound the shofar, everybody stops for a second. It's very interesting. You sound the shofar somewhat, people stop, right? They stop. So that's something like return, which is not the case of making God a king. Making God a king, this is an essential surrender of the, to the essence of God this is even higher than the commandment, and it's even higher than doing tshuva. As if so, it comes out that there's three things in the shofar. The mitzvah, the tshuva, returning to God, which that's concealed in the shofar. And then there's a third thing, which is it's even higher than being concealed. This is making God a king. This is the essence of the point of sounding the shofar, the uniqueness of sounding the shofar, which is not in any other commandment that the shofar uniquely makes God into a king. And we're going to discuss this more, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's just do the yom yom. For today. There was a time when every, every brief saying that a chassid would say was considered to be a deep, deep lesson, a life lesson. Everything that the person saw was an instruction in serving God, how to do it, how to serve God. 
Rabbi Mendel Futafas told me he was in Siberia and the situation was so bad and depressing and over there that um, the only way he could keep sane was by trying to learn a lesson from everything that he saw or that he heard. And also to say the words of Torah by heart, but to say from everything that he heard and everything that he saw. He says that's the way it used to be by Hasidim especially. Everything they saw, everything they heard, they took it as a deep lesson for self-improvement. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, three o'clock, God willing, we're learning the Chumash. We'll finish the Chumash portion today. And I think that tomorrow, Thursday, we'll start learning a little bit the laws of Rosh Hashanah so that we'll be prepared for Rosh Hashanah. Have a good day. God bless you all. And hope to see you at three o'clock with Mashiach now.